Hello and welcome. Well, we're back here for match two of season two of the T2 Challenge. Hi, everybody. I am Mark Thompson, along with the high performance director of USA Table Tennis, Sean O'Neill, and with Team Alpha leading one game to none, Jimmy Butler's victory over Deng Zhen. We turn our attention to the Olympian from Iran, Shaheen Aklapasan, taking on Lee Ki Wei. Bakla Pasan representing Team Alpha and Leaky Way representing Team Omega, Sean O'Neill, in what is match two of 16 regional matches we have here in season two of the T2 Challenge. And a super exciting matchup here in match two um, with Shaheen, offensive, all around control, keeps the ball on the table, and then you've got Leaky Way. He can chop from close, from far. When you're not expecting it, he can come in with a very strong forehand rip. So it should be interesting to see if Shaheen can deal with that change of pace, that change of spin. Should be exciting. Yeah, we note that Shaheen Aklapasan is an Olympian. He rep represented Iran in the Olympians. And you talk about Leaky Way, Sean. He was actually at one time in the top 75 in the world. This guy is a top-notch player. You mentioned the defensive style. He is a modern defender. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two interact with one another. Yeah, it's the, the trick is going to be not to play any safe balls because that's what Lee Kiwe wants. He wants to have that controlled opening when you're trying to read the spin to kind of dart in and get his forehand. And he can play it both wide to the backhand, into the body, wide out to the forehand. So he is such a difficult player to prepare for. Yeah, one of the good things about Season 2 of the T2 Challenge, it is all types of players. We've got a couple of guys who are over the age of 40. Shaheen Aklapasan out of Austin, Texas, a 42-year-old. Lee Ki Wei is a 41-year-old, and uh, he is a player that plays out of Texas as well. So these are, I don't want to say old, I better not say they're old, but they are older players facing one another in a very important match for their teams, Team Alpha and Team Omega. Yeah, the experience is going to show, and I think right now Leaky Way does have the upper hand, but as we've seen, once you add Fast Five to the mix, literally anything can happen. All right, we'll get to the match. It is Shaheen Aklapasan out of Austin, Texas, taking on Lee Ki Wei, another uh, one of the uh, Texas residents. We get a look at the tail of the tape. Aklapasan, 41 years of age, a lefty, plays from the attack style, and Lee Ki Wei, a 40 year old, a right handed player, plays on the defensive style. And sometimes we think of defensive style, Sean, as being somewhat boring, but I'm not sure that we're going to see boring out of Lee Ki Wei. No, he definitely has all the tools and his forehand attack sometimes will send him to the ground as he's going for big finishing shots. And of course, the teams are very important in this. There are 16 regional matches representing Team Alpha in this match. It is Shaheen Aklapasan, Leaky Way representing Team Omega. And it is the team, Sean, who wins the region. In other words, uh, the team that wins the most matches in the 16 regional matches is going to advance to the finals where they'll completely disband themselves as a team and play against one another which is a very interesting format. But right now, the concern for everybody is how your team is going. So all the teammates of either Shaheen Aklapasan or Leaky Way are watching this game with bated breath or this match with bated breath. Now, we've always said that table tennis is a family sport and T2's taking it to the next level where after your teammates help you qualify for the finals, then you've got to go head to head against them. So, of course, we've got the Alguetti brothers in it who are opposing team captains. So we've added an extra layer with Team Alpha and Team Omega. It is Leaky Way with the first serve and the lefty Aklapasan. Nice return in game one to take the first point of this match and leading one to nothing. And Leaky Way's serves are also very difficult to read. He hides the ball just a little bit. And you can see that time Shaheen having issue just even reading the amount of underspin on the ball, knowing that Leaky Way loves to then back up and change the spin with his heavy, heavy backhand chops. First serve of the match for Aklapasan. Digging it out deep was Leaky Way. And on the forehand going long is Aklapasan. Leaky Way up to one. And that's the challenge mark right now for Shaheen. When he's looping the ball, Lee Ki Wei is constantly changing the spin. He's got long pips on one side, so it'll be a heavy ball, a dead ball. And then he can vary it among each side of the paddle with the ability to go dead off the inverted 
or even um, heavy and dead off of the long tips. So look for balls to when Shaheen misses to go in the bottom of the net or wide off the end of the table. That's a nice forehand by Shaheen Aklapasan that time. Lee Kiwi having difficulty on the return, but still leads 3-2 here in game one. This is the second of 16 regional matches. Jimmy Butler took the first one for Team Alpha over Deng Zhen. So trying to get Team Omega on the board is Lee Kiwi, and he's up 4-2 here in game one. He'll take a little bit of a towel break. Of course, we played the T2 rules, and we did go to Fast Five in the first match of the regionals. The 24-minute clock is running. It stays running. The only time it stops is during a timeout or if the umpire were to determine that there was a reason to stop the clock. We had a little bit of that in the first match of the regionals. But uh, here uh, right now with 21.55 remaining in the T2 clock in game one and up now 6-2 early is Lee Kiwe. And you really can see Leaky Way mixing it up, sometimes playing backhand chops on the middle or forehand side. The serve, when you have a righty lefty, it's always tough to see the forehand serve because the body naturally covers it. But these are very, very well. Oh, and that it looked like Shaheen might have had his racket get caught on the edge of the table as he went to play that last ball. But Leaky Way is showing his experience and his ability to really move the ball around. Leaky Way, the taller of the two players, as you know, he kind of covers over in that serve. <laughs> there, Sean. I don't want to get into that right at the moment, but. And you could see even on that last serve, not easy to see it. And he loads up the heavy underspin and he deadens up the ball with no spin. So you've got to have a good read. Now we're going to see a backhand serve where he'll probably just load it up a lot, and go directly into chopping. Whoa, what a backhand loop out of nowhere. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shaheen Akhlamazan may have been expecting the chop on that. He didn't get it. That was a drive oh. that just blitzed behind him. And up 8-2 early on is Leaky Way. And that time, Leaky Way tried to go down the line and curve it around the net. I guess if you're going to do one highlight, why not try another one? But that backhand loop, I mean, that just came out of nowhere. Now up 9-2 is Lee Kiway. Oh, excuse me, that's 9-3. And sometimes, Mark, those shots like that backhand loop can be worth a couple more when all of a sudden you realize you can't, you have no safe place to go to. But Lee Kiway really trying to juice up the serve, serves it into the net. So Shaheen doing a nice job there of just calming down, settling down, not overplaying. Now with game point in game one at 10-5 is Leaky Way. The serve to Shaheen Aklapasand. And he's into the net, and game one does go to Leaky Way. And he does it in relatively quick fashion, Sean, and that can be important. He wins 11-5. Of course, we have the 24-minute clock running. If you were to win your match without having to go to the Fast Five, it has implications not only for your, yourself, but also for your team. The team is just getting one point for the victory. You get two by winning without going to the Fast Five. And you also get an, uh, extra points for yourself in the individual capacity, which could have impact and begin the ultimate finals. The key way does, uh, takes care of Shaheen Aklapasan in relatively quick fashion in game one. There are 45 seconds in between games allowed in under the T2 rules. And, and uh, the clock continues to run during that time period. Shaheen Aklapasan, as noted, out of Austin, Texas. He coaches at one of the really nice clubs in America, the Austin Table Tennis Club. I've had occasion to be there myself. I, first of all, the city of Austin is a great, great town, number one. But the club they have set up there, Sean, is one of the really premier clubs in the United States of America. We're at the Houston International Table Tennis Academy today, another one of the great clubs in this great country. 
And both these clubs, the thing that I love the most, obviously, as a high performance director, is they've got a great junior development program, super coaches, really doing a lot of com community outreach, and having champions like Lee Ki Wei and Shaheen, they set such great examples and role models for that next generation of players. All right, Shaheen Akhlapasan with the serve, trying to get back into things. Down one game to none in the best of seven here, season two of the T2 Challenge. Lee Ki Wei, just a master of changing the spin. Sometimes you watch on his backhand chop, he'll even snap the wrist up, add a little bit of side spin to give you another element to deal with. Now up 2 nothing in game two is Lee Ki Wei. You know, you talk about a player, Sean, like Lee Ki Wei, who at one time was in the top 75 in the world. You know, playing as a defensive player, that's saying quite a bit about your capability as an elite-level table tennis player. And uh, look at that great forehand coming in, just taking the point over. In China, it's very common for a lot of the provincial teams to have at least one defensive player. It's so good to help. And again, another forehand rip down the line to just extend this game. But the, the Chinese like to teach good looping technique by playing against choppers. So I'm sure that Li Ki Wei, when he was in China, he had a dual role, not just to become a great player, but also to help his team do well and really learn how to play against choppers and improve their offense. <laughs> I mean, this is just a slugfest right here um, clinic by Lee Ki Wei just showing how strong his offense is. Yeah, it looks like Shaheen Akhlapazan is getting a lot of balls up high, and that's giving Lee Ki Wei the opportunity to kind of tee off. You know, you talk about the team from China. We had the opportunity when they brought the Chinese national team over to the United States and Southern California at UCLA for their training camp. It was very interesting to watch, Sean, how they interact with one another. It reminded me, quite honestly, of you know my time in pro hockey is that, that it very much is a team sport when you look at the way the Chinese approach it. Now, that is couldn't be better said. The team approach, really, the and there's a misserve there. Lee Ki Wei's having issues with his serve. He's missed a forehand serve, now a backhand serve. But the team approach where everyone's working, collaborating, helping each other really speeds up the improvement. On that time, Lee Ki Wei went for everything and couldn't get the ball up and over the net. But again, Shaheen doing a wonderful job reading the spin, taking his time, moving it around. Getting himself back into this game. He was down 5 nothing. now at 5-3. But there, you look at that ball, went almost straight into the table. Lee Ki Wei not only returning it with spin, but adding a little bit of his own. That ball catches the top of the net, but Lee Ki Wei had the ball that he wanted. He loves to step around that backhand and go in both directions. It's interesting. He does take a wild shot. At <laughs> he swings for the fences. He's like a, a current Major League Baseball player. Either they strike out or they hit it out of the park. He likes to go yard. and his These backhand chops, look at this. Look oh, at that from the backcourt, a big forehand loop. Beautiful shot by Lee Kiwei there. He was deep. He was the paddles below the table. He's able to drive that over top of the net and land it on. Just a beautiful shot. Again, changing to serving from the middle of the table to get a little bit more of an angle. Shaheen really looking like he's having a tough day at the office right now. Taking the towel break is Lee Ki Wei up 8-4 here in game two. Up one game to none at 13-20 on the T2 timer. So as noted, if you're able to win your match without getting to the fast five, without running out of time, it is important for you and your team. Oh, that time Lee Ki Wei came in with a great 
running forehand, but Shaheen got it back. And it looked like Leaky Way was a little surprised that it came back a little on high, but it was on top of his body. Well, that time Leaky Way dug one off the side of the table and off the top of the net and out from Shaheen Aklapasan. He's kicking himself a bit there because I think he felt like he had the backhand side wide open and missed. I mean, that's just so smooth, so sweet, nice serve, and then hooking forehand, just landing it right in the backhand corner to go to game point. Backhand chop goes long, so Aklapasan gets the serve back down. 6-10 here in game two, down one game to none. Oh, another great, powerful forehand that time by Lee Ki Wei to take game two as he takes the big swing and hits that one out of the park, Sean, and wins 11-6 in game two and now up two games to none. Just a very strong, I mean, these first two games have shown how Lee Ki Wei with his modern defensive, offensive finishing type of style, um, just showing a lot of supremacy here. It is back six of the T2 challenge we get another look at that play is there's that big swing and he just doesn't leave anything on the table at all and it isn't oh man and he, he's using his hand left. just to stay stay balanced and not go down wow hey. all down after hitting that one right there but he's up two games to none here in the best of seven representing team omega whose captains are adar alguetti and matilda eckholm who we'll see down the road somewhere, Sean, at the Westchester Table Tennis Center. We're here at the Houston International Table Tennis Academy. This is match two of what are 16 regionals for season two of the T2 Challenge. Next up, we've got one more match here in Houston. We've got the uh, American Olympian, Huiji Wong, who's going to be taking on the youngster, Jiaki Lin. And two of the women that are in this season two of the T2 Challenge, actually six women playing in this. And of course, Hui Jing Wang is going to represent the United States of America in Tokyo in what is now 2021 when we get to the Olympics there. So that'll be an interesting match. That is upcoming here at the Houston International Table Tennis Academy. Lee Ki Wei just once, and there that time caught the top of the net. You can just see that the thin air that he has there off of that slightly hidden serve, then jumping on the offense right out of the blocks to keep the momentum going. Good. As now taking the one or the tying things up at one apiece here in game two. Serve so back to Akla Passan who did represent Iran in the Olympics, actually represented the Iranian national team for a good 20 years. And he was in Athens in 2004, representing Iran, born there, now residing in Austin, Texas, where he's a coach at the Austin Table Tennis Club. And with the serve is Akla Passan, up 2-1 here in game three, but that's long. And now at 2-2, two, two, Lee Ki Wei gets the serve back and he's up two games to none. Yeah, Shaheen has to be careful when he's serving not to only think of Lee Ki Wei as a defender, but somebody who might put pressure directly off the serve. Beautiful forehand loop. Shaheen doing an excellent job on blocking, but that final step around had too much heavy topspin by Lee Ki Wei. Takes his first lead of this third game, up two games to none at 3-2, Leaky Way. He mixes up the serves very well, forehand to backhand. This is a guy I think keeps you guessing all the time, Sean. He's, he's definitely a little bit of a magician there where the sleight of hand and the fool, fool you with the change of spin – you can see Shaheen just really having difficulty after he makes one strong loop. He's not completely sure whether that ball's coming back loaded twice as much with underspin or if Leaky Way has taken all the spin off of it. 
That was actually a great return by Lee Kiway because it looked like to me that that ball was off the edge of the table and changed direction yeah. after hitting essentially right on the white line. He was able to adjust the paddle, properly get the ball back on the table, and uh, and Shaheen Aklapasan didn't have an answer. Yeah, Lee Kiway, once again, I mean, he's such a complete and tough player, and, and his relentless big forehands that come in at the last second I mean, even that's a great opening right there. That ball came off the side, and he heavily spun it up, giving Shaheen a difficult shot to bring down. Yeah, he's dug a couple off the side of the <laughs> table. He does it so calmly and without any you know, any frantic movement at all. Just tremendous. You know, I think that's just showing the veteran poise. He is a 41-year-old who's played at the highest level, levels of elite table tennis, and both of these players have, but – you know, for Lee Kiway, he just has a, even though he bounces around quite a bit, he kind of exudes a, a, a certain level of calm when he's having to handle those difficult shots. Yeah, he's still, when I watch him, Mark, sometimes I get the feeling that he's still like a 15-year-old when he goes for the big <laughs> shots, but then when it comes time to really go into <laughs> lockdown. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, he's having fun out there, and when it's time to go lockdown, he will just keep bringing everything back. But given an opportunity of doing a highlight or a three-pointer, he'll go for it without any hesitation. He's up 8-2 here in game three, up two games to none, Leaky Way. Look at that great return on the backhand side. And it's almost like a no-look. <laughs> you can't look. Powerful forehands, and he finishes on the second one. I thought Akla Pazan did a good job that time of getting the ball back on the table after the first powerful forehand loop, but not the second. You know, absolutely right. And Lee Kiway put his hand up to say, like, sorry, I had to ha hit two bombs at you to, to win the point. But, yeah, I would not like to be in Shaheen's shoes right now because um, he's just getting everything thrown at him from change of spin to no spin to bombs. And um, – it's not much you can do when that ball's exploding on your side of the net. And Leaky Way up 9-3 here in game three, up two games to none. There's still 545 remaining on the T2 timer. So let's keep our eyes on that as well. Leaky Way, who is out of Malta. That's where he Developed his table tennis skills. He's done it pretty well. He's up 10-4 now here in game three, trying to close things out and get to what could be a decisive game four. Oh, and look at that backhand down the line, side spin chop. Backhand, or as you call it, a chop. <laughs> it's just like right on the line, too, Sean. Nothing Akla Fasan could do on that to get to that ball. I mean, running around the forehand to take the backhand somewhat inside out. A lot of creativity, a lot of risk, a lot of fun. So here in what is the second match of 16 regionals, Lee Kiway representing Team Omega up three games to none after the 11-4 victory in game three. And there's still four minutes remaining here on the 24-minute T2 clock and up one nothing here in game four is the veteran leaky way. So Mark, in this situation, I think with Shaheen, the most important thing for him is to figure out a way of getting that clock to run down and hopefully force a fast five because otherwise he will be dropping two team points in the it series. It is a critic. And on the flip side of that equation, if you're leaky way, you're like, hold it a second. I want to drive this match as quickly as I possibly can. And again, leaky way having issues with his serves. I when when he when you're as aggressive as he is, there's not much margin of error. But I mean that ball's been jumping off of his racket, both on the forehand and backhand side. And now Akla Passan with his largest lead of this match at 3-1. And he'll have the serve here. Down three games to none, but he's got some fight in his game as well. The lefty out of Austin, Texas. 
has a good forehand loop down the backhand side. Leaky Way couldn't handle it. And up to a 4-1 lead is Akla Passand. The punch goes off the net and a little bit of a question mark here. Akla Passand. I think he was. I'm not sure what the uh, the concern was there, Sean. But yeah, I think I think it was when Leaky Way stepped in for that short serve. His foot probably touched the under carriage end board, and Shaheen might not have been sure what that noise was because Leaky Way just kind of tapped it again afterwards. So, um, wondering if it was a let because he heard the noise, but no, I think it was just the the bottom of the table. So. A couple of times from the taller players. We saw it from Jimmy Butler in the first match of season two of the T2 Challenge, and now Leaky Way having a similar issue, and now with the serve down by two, but drawing back within one. Michael Passan, you can see a little bit of body language there, not particularly happy with himself on that return. Yeah, I've, I've been in that situation, Mark, when you have a player serving and you can't read the spin, and if you're going to lift up what could be that heavy underspin serve by Leaky Way when he goes to the dead ball, um, it's going to fly off the end like it just did. Oh, that's a nice block there in return by Shaheen. Well done. Takes the two-point lead again here in game four. It is a best of seven. Leaky Way trying to close things out quickly, but he's running out of time on the 24-minute clock. Just 52 seconds left. Doesn't look like he's going to get it done on this Second match of what are 16 regionals, Team Alpha versus Team Omega, Season 2, T2 Challenge. And as we've noted a couple times, it is the team victory that matters as to whom will advance to the finals here in Season 2. The 16 players who are on the winning team will advance to the finals where they'll disregard any loyalties they may have to their team and go at one another, I'm sure, hammer and tong. And we'll also add in some wild cards as well at that time to have what should be a real exciting final here in season two. And Shashin having issues with his serve. And now Lee Kiwei storming back to a 6-5 lead here. Lee Kiwei definitely loves to play to the crowd. He loves to make big shots. And that time, unable to convert now it does look like if another game would be possible if shaheen can somehow rally and win this game we would be in the fast five format and leaky way as you notice battled back from the deficit of three points and has things at six six up three games to none here at the houston international table tennis academy and We've got a timeout here. It is one of the moments uh, right now the clock is not running, but as we've noted on a couple of occasions, the 24-minute clock is a unique uh, element of the T2 rules. There are several. One that I really like, Sean, I have to say about the T2 rules is there's no deuce. Not that I'm against deuce, but it really does make for exciting matches when you get down to you know the 10-10 the, the circumstance where – you realize you don't have another day to live. It is right now or never. And it does add a completely different mindset, I think, to the game when you play without deuce. Yeah, it really does. So normally players are thinking, if I get the ad, then I've got something to play with. Or if I go down an ad and I've got the serve, I can always bring it back even. But in T2 format, it's do or die. And right now, Shaheen is fighting to make sure that, and that's a great serve there. He's fighting to make sure that he gets into a fast five because that will save his team a two point team extra point for Leaky Way and Team Omega. I'm sure all the Team Alpha teammates, including Jimmy Butler, who won the first match of the 16 re regionals, and Sharon Alguetti, who's the co captain, they are probably uh, somewhere right now cheering for their teammate. Uh, Shaheen Aklapasan to hold on. He's up three now again. Second time in the game four that he has led by three points. Now right now at nine six. The the funny thing, Mark, is when Leaky Way misses a shot, he likes to go for a bigger shot on the on the next one. And that that heavy serve also 
bouncing too close to the net. So now Shaheen looks like he will have saved an extra team point if he can finish off this game four. And he does. That's actually a really big point rig game for Shaheen Aquapassan and his teammates on Team Alpha as he will get to the fast five. Avoid, as we've noted, the circumstance where you not only lose this match and lose one point for your team, but you'd lose two because if a player is able to win without the fast five, you're going to win. Play here, I believe, of the final point of that uh, fourth game and Leaky Way is off the edge of the paddle and into the net and despite the fact leading now three So it really it is a fast, truly fast five. When you get to the fast five at 4-4, four, four, as we've seen before, it's very exciting. Yeah, right now, both players fighting for one point for their team. Lee Kiwi trying to even up the series while Shaheen is dealing with a change of spin like he's probably never seen before. Shaheen did a good job of adjusting to that ball off the net that time and ends up tying things up at one apiece here in game five. Down three games to one, Lee Kiwei with the serve. He'll go back to the forehand serve, which he does off the left corner of the table. That was a nice return there by Shaheen, mixing up his push, giving Lee Kiwei a dead ball that floated off the end. Good, good point that time for Aklapasan, but I thought Lee Kiwi did a good job of hanging in. There were a couple I thought he was dead on. He was able to get the ball back on the table, but it is Aklapasan who takes the fourth point, up now 3-1. Mark, we've seen fast fives really dramatically change momentum. And Lee Kiwi again having issues with that aggressive serve. Now with game point, Shaheen Aklapasan trying to drag his way back into this match. And he does take game five and draws within one game the fast five in his dominant fashion. Shaheen Aklapasan, 5-1 victory in game five, is drawn to a uh, down by just one game, Sean, after, after Leaky Way had gone out to winning the first three, 11-5-11, 6-11, 6-11-6. It's bouncing back Aklapasan with a 11-6 win. Fast five, five one win. Yeah, and just the ability to only have to win half the number of points to get back into a game and then get, thus get back into the match. Shaheen, really nice at just playing control box, letting Lee Kiwi make the mistake. And this is the beauty, I suppose, of Fast Five is despite kind of having been, you know, down and, and out, it doesn't take much to get right back into the match. You can do it really quickly. Absolutely. And Lee kiway has got to keep an eye on those serves. He's just given away way too many points by going for the heavier spin. If he does open here with the first point of our second fast five, game six, up three games to two. Lee Kiwi with the serve. You switch the serve every time in the fast five, and he's going to go to the backhand chop serve. Shaheen doing an excellent job returning that big forehand step around by Lee Kiwi and just keeping the ball in play. And 
We're taking the lead here in game six is Shaheen Akhlepasan up 2-1. And you can tell by his body language, Sean, that he is really into the match right now for Akhlepasan. Oh, his focus is night and day different than what we saw in the first three games. Oh, oh that's oh. a great loop down the line by Leaky Way. Beautiful power right on the paint. Down uh, what is the forehand side for Aklapasan, but no answer there. 2-2, two, two, game six. <laughs> and that ball is severely loaded with underspin. When it left Shaheen's racket, it went straight down. Lucky it even caught the tabletop. So Lee Kiwei really raising his level. One floats long, so it's 3-3 three, three here in game six. As Akla Pasan has done a good job of kind of retaking the, the momentum in this match and Leaky Way trying to find what he had earlier when he was up three games to none. Oh, again... As that ball keeps going over the net just to keep track of the amount of spin, Lee Kiwei finally threw in a super heavy underspin deep to the forehand that Shaheen, again, misread, barely got it to the net. And now with match point, Lee Kiwei and the serve. He's going to go to the forehand. It appears off the left corner, which he's done effectively during this match. It's a let serve. Lee Kiwei trying to close things out. Against the Olympian Shaheen Aklapasan. And he does so, and it's Leaky Way for Team Omega defeating Shaheen Aklapasan. 5 3 in game six, four games to two. Leaky Way was on, on the ropes there for a moment. He had the, the match really very easy for a while, up 3 0, but Shaheen Aklapasan did a good job getting back into things, but it is Leaky Way evening things up now, Sean. For Team Omega at one match piece. Yeah, Lee Kiwei, again, what momentum shifts back and forth. And Shaheen, excellent job of fighting to stave off that double point team advantage that Lee Kiwei could have sent over for Team Omega. But again, Lee Kiwei, just too much experience, heavy, heavy underspins, and those forehand devastating counterattacks. I give a lot of credit to Shaheen Aklapasan because at one moment you could tell by his body language he was not very happy with himself, he wasn't happy with the match. But that's one of the great elements, Sean, I believe of table tennis is your capacity to kind of regroup, get back in the match, and change the momentum. And I thought he did a pretty good job of, of doing that later in the match. And he really used the fast five to his advantage as well. I mean, getting into it and then staying calm and getting that quick extra game victory. Now that won't really show up on the boards, but it does give him a lot of confidence. Hopefully the next time he plays Lee Ki Wei, he'll say, you know what, I kind of know what to expect and um, I can play with this guy. All right, in the T2 Challenge Season 2, we got a dogfight now. Team Alpha one match and Team Omega one match. We've got one more to go here in Houston. We've got the American Olympian Hui Jing Wang taking on Jackie Lin of, uh, the, of uh, Texas Wesleyan. Three matches played here in Houston. Now we'll start our regionals elsewhere in the country. For Sean O'Neill, the High Performance Director at USA Table Tennis, I'm Mark Thompson. Thanks for joining us, everybody, for the T2 Challenge Season 2.